wonderful. Life is wonderful. I am so, you know, I'm always excited. <laughs> it's, um, it's just part of my nature to be excited about um, opportunities to talk and to come in and share. Um, this particular month, like I was saying before, we are focused in on this idea of spiritual abundance because it's it's so amazing because we are in this universe where everything, I mean, everything is not only possible. You know, they're talking about a guy t- taking all these folks to Mars these days. Um, not only is everything possible, but everything is possible right where you are and in your life. And so I get excited whenever I think about the opportunities that we have to kind of come in and share. And to share not just from the, from the thought system of, you know, where we are, but to figure out how to get where it is that we want to go. So today is no different. We get a chance to talk about that. So I'm so glad to see all everybody. This is, this is, um, this is awesome, you know. It's awesome, and it's awesome to be in this space. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I started thinking about this, and I started thinking about, you know, there are so many laws that govern our universe, right? We know about the ones that we can see because we have um, basically come up in a society, and I always talk about this, um, this type of thing. We've come up in a society that has taught us certain rules, We learn them, and to some extent, it almost becomes this thing that, since we've learned it over and over throughout the years, it becomes a part of our psychology, and therefore, we don't recognize it anymore as something that we've learned. So, you know, we we just take it for granted. So say, for instance, if we start to talk about the laws that govern the universe, all of us fall up under the laws, like it or not. It is not according to our belief in them, but rather the fact that they are. I mean, they are true. They are real. Take, for instance, the law of gravity, right? Whether you believe in gravity or not, we are subject to it. It doesn't take your conscious awareness about it. It doesn't take your agreement in it. None of that stuff. It is a law unto itself. And that's what it does. I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, and and so people get outside of, you know, the gravitational pull of the earth, and then they start talking about it. Law of gravity, just like the laws of mathematics or relativity, or, I mean, there's so many different laws that we learn or that we're subject to, we sort of forget about them and take them for granted. But one of the things about it is, is that a law is something that is basically in place and it is testable, it is provable, it is repetitive, and it's constant. That's what makes it a law, right? And so because it's predictable, we can basically say, you know what, when I throw something up, it's going to come down. And it happens every time. So when you start to think about that in terms of, you know, the physical laws, one of the things that we don't recognize is that we're also subject to spiritual laws. Because when we start to talk about spirit, because it's something that we can't see, we don't have this objective reality that says, you know, this is what happens every time. We'll see things that happen. It's almost as if that cause and effect is always at work. We'll see them, but unless we understand it, we kind of step outside of it and we're not able to repeat it. Say, for instance, one time it doesn't work, then we sort of forget about it. But now the, the, the wonderful thing about it is, is that all of this stuff, our spiritual truths, our spiritual laws, are kind of like exercises that we do. You know, if I, you ever see that commercial where they say, oh, if you only had to do one thing one time, you would be okay. Then somebody gets down and do one push-up and walk away like they're good for the rest of their lives. Well, you know, if I just do exercise on one time or one day, by the end of the week, the effects of that one day of exercise or that one little thing wore off. As a matter of fact, my muscles forget about it and they go back to that state of, you know, nothingness. I've been, um, I've been trying to do yoga, y'all. Now, I, 
I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> You're going to clap. <laughs> Bless your heart. I'll tell you, when I was younger, I, um, I was in gymnastics, and I used to do gymnastics, and so I used to pride myself on being really flexible. <laughs> It's so funny though. Now it's like uh, you know they got this downward facing dog, and then you got to bring your foot up through it. I am not that flexible anymore. <laughs> and so, in spite of the fact that I was miss, I could do a split and all this other stuff when I was younger. The effects of that is not are not lasting to this day. So it becomes one of those things that you have to work at and you've got to, you know, kind of do on a daily basis. Spiritual laws are the same way. You actually have to do them in order for them to work. So I, I want to put a bookmark there because I want to um, move over to another spot for a second. You know, people talk about and think about God in ways... Um, that are very interesting to me. We grew up learning that God was um, basically responsive to us in, in the sense that if we do something bad, it's going to get you, you know? You're going to be on, on the list, you know, or God will strike you na your name out of his book. I remember one time I had a conversation with my mother about that. God is going to strike your name off of his book like my name was, you know, so, so we act as if God is this capricious God, you know, that changes and, and you know, and, and punishes us and all of this stuff. But wonder if we understood and learned that by law, God is love and has no choice, no other desire to do anything other than love you. That means that God, no matter what you do, is loving you, is seeking you, is desiring the highest and the best for you. That's the reason why you were created here. So love is one law. Forgiveness. God forgives you no matter what you do, right? And all the time. I, I love that thing where uh, famous Amos said that God is always saying yes to you, right? And God really is always saying yes to you. But now, what is it that you're saying yes to? What is it that you're putting out there? So when you receive or you feel lack, when you feel limitation, when you feel all of that stuff, it's not because God is doing that to you. It's because you're doing that. It's saying yes to your thoughts and your desires. If you have fear in your life, God is saying, okay, that's what you want. Yes, more of that. And so if you have lack, if you have fear, if you have worry, God is saying, okay, I'm going to get in agreement with you. Well, why don't you get in agreement with God, right? Why don't you change around how it is that you see things? So um, the Course in Miracles has this thing up there, and it says that um, what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. I always, you know, I always do this thing because I know it by heart, and so, you know... <laughs> Y'all ever see people who, um, they, they, the only way they know how to drive is by landmarks. They get around by landmarks. You do that? I'm, I'm sorry. I, you, <laughs> right, right. And so people, I had, I had a girlfriend who we would go out someplace and we would go, you know, we would be going someplace. And she would come and pick me up. But then she would go all the way back to her house because the only way she knew how to go was to go from her house. And I'm saying, no, just go down here and turn and this way. And she can't drive like that. And so some people need landmarks. So when I'm doing the Course in Miracles, there are certain things that I know by heart. And so I start back at the beginning like, okay, here, uh, the opposite of love is fear. But what is all encompassing can have no opposites, right? <laughs> So I have to come in at a certain point because that's how I know it. <laughs> but it works because it's in there. It's like prego. It's in there. <laughs> so, so the truth is, our truth is love. Love is the only truth there is. The opposite of love, it says, is fear. Now, We'll, a lot of people will sit there and think like, no, the opposite of love is hate or the opposite of love is something else. But now, 
if you look at fear as this umbrella under which all of these other emotions fall, like hate, jealousy, um, you know, this idea, this fear that you're not enough, all of the other emotions other than love fall up under the umbrella of fear. So the opposite of love being fear. But what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. It's kind of like that same thing that we learned about God. Remember how we learned that, you know, God is everywhere present in all, through all, as all. We learned that God is all knowledge, um, omnipotent, omnipresent, you know all the ones that we learned, right? And so it, it always confounds me when people talk about all, and then they bring in an opposite. How do you have all and opposite? All means all, right? right, 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 right. I, I, it seems simple. But for many people, it's not because they need to have some kind of, you know, something else there that's in opposition. So God being love, meaning it's in its allness, then the opposite of that is fear. But fear is not the truth. It's kind of like, I always say, it's kind of like the sunshine, right? The sun is always shining. Always shining, right? A lot of times what happens is, is because the earth rotates and because we move, you have the ability to block or the sun to be blocked, but it doesn't mean that it ever stops shining. So if the earth turns and it turns away from the sun, then the sun is still shining. It just that you've turned away. Right. And so it becomes that same thing. Love is always present. It's the truth, but sometimes the clouds come into your life and block the fact that you're, that you're loved. Sometimes situations come into your life, and you can't understand it because something has come in. So there's this thing. The universe is the flow. Everything flows. Everything is moving. Everything is good. But then when you get blockage, which is fear, that blockage like inhibits you from experiencing all that you want, right? So what does love look like? Love looks like perfect flow. Love looks like, oh, yes, you can. Love looks like beauty, joy, happiness. It looks like all those wonderful things, right? Everything is well, you know. You are a blessing. Others are blessing you. Things are coming to you. Um, you're giving. You're participating in the flow. Everything is wonderful and easy, but when you have fear, fear is the kind of stuff like, oh, I'm so constricted, I can't pay my bills. Um, you need to walk to the bathroom with me because people will be looking at me. Uh, I think they were talking about me. Blah, blah, blah. Fear, like, you know, the, the idea that you can't pay your bills. Love is saying that, you know what? All that I need is coming to me. All that I need will be provided for me, even before I think I need it. Didn't the Bible tell us that it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? And even before you've asked, I already know what you need? We were told that. And so the fact of the matter is, is that when we're in the flow, when we're in that love flow, all of it will happen just as it's supposed to. There's nothing to fear. It says that the, 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 the birds and the lilies, they don't worry about and fret over things sufficient unto this day. I've got exactly what I need and it'll be okay. And it always is. So I started thinking about this whole thing about the blocks that get in our way and why do they get in our way? Why do we allow fear to creep in? Uh, a girlfriend of mine, it seems like she's at this wonderful point in her life where everything is coming up roses. You know, she's got all of this stuff happening to her and for her. But yet and still, it's almost as if there's some part of her that feels guilty about that. It's, a, it's as if some part of her needs to say, oh, but I'm worried about this or I'm worried about that or wonder if, you know, this happens or wonder if that happens. 
that's one of those things that it's like there's a immediate block because now all of a sudden she's caught up in fear and fear is not the truth. If we could just say that yes to everything, yes to life and know that all will be well. And, and some people will sit there and say, yeah, but you can't say yes to everything. You've got to be discerning. You've got to be this. You've got to be that. Is that not, does that not sound like fear? Does that not sound like fear coming up? I'll tell you, everything, my grandmother used to say this all the time, everything that happens, happens for the good, for those who love the Lord. She would say that all the time. And and for the most part, you I would sit there, you know, sometimes like thinking like, hey, you know, grandma, whatever, like, <laughs> you know, where you get that from, you know? And she just like, keep on living, baby. Yeah. Right? Keep on living, baby. <laughs> Grandma, I'm there. <laughs> it really does happen for the good. Let me tell y'all this quick story um, that happened to me. Um, it just happened uh, just last night. Last night, we went to this Motown review. I drug Alan to the Motown <laughs> review. Because, you know, he, when I asked him, I said, oh, do you want to go? He says, not particularly. <laughs> yeah, but if I must, I'll go, which meant, you know, I'm going, so, you know, Alan goes and tell. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so we go, and um, I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed myself at this concert, but at the first part of the concert, they had, you know, when you walk in the door, you've got to walk past all these vendors that have their tables set up. Okay, that's great. Um, so we walked past all the vendors. We get in there. We've got VIP tickets. So we sit in the front row. Of course, well, you know, how else is there to fly, right? <laughs> and uh, so, so we sit down, and they said that the first thing that was going to happen was is that they were having a fashion show. And the fashion show was being put on by Schwartz Furs. Ooh. Yeah. So they had all these women come out, and they come out in their furs, and they modeled, you know, they did the whole thing so we could see it and spread out the furs. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself, like, that's wonderful. Now, remember how Reverend Ike used to say, that he would look in the window and what he would, you know, even before he had anything, he says he would just identify with it. I am that, you know. And whatever it was that he wanted, he learned how to call it forth. Because we are powerful beyond our, our you know, our imaginings. The Course in Miracles has this thing where it says that we can do a whole lot of stuff. You know, you can, you can get caught up in worry, you can get caught up in all these things, but you cannot diminish the power of your mind. The mind is always powerfully creative. Our conscious mind, our conscious thoughts pull things and draw things to us. If it's something that you fear... Even Job says, even that which I fear has come upon me because you draw those things to you. What you focus on, you pull it. It's almost as if you're magnetic. You know, that's one of the laws, the law of attraction. You magnetize the things that you desire. So I see these furs come out. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, oh, man. You know, I, of course... <laughs> I, I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, the lady is up there and she's kind of laughing like, you know, you know, like my husband is out there. He's seeing all this stuff and I'm sitting next to Alan and I'm thinking to myself, you know, Mr. Sourpuss over here that didn't want to be in it. I was like trying to keep quiet, but I was like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that one. You know, I was like, okay. So, you know, I went up and I felt one because it was just so gorgeous. I had to feel it. It was beautiful. And I wanted something that was short, but, you know, whatever. But I was just thinking to myself, very nice. But I kind of put it out of my mind. I thought, yeah, I'm going to get me one of those, right? I put it out of my mind. This morning when I woke up, Y'all, y'all know things. It's not even luck. It's the power of magnetism. 
this morning when I woke up, I'm laying there and I'm doing my, you know, my meditation and, and I'm, you know, I, this is even before I got out of bed because it's still in the 7 o'clock-ish kind of range, 7.15. All of a sudden, my phone rings. I look over and I pick up my phone because I'm thinking to myself, who the heck is calling me this early in the morning? And it's a friend of the family's. Sandy, hey, you know, she's, uh, you know, a friend of my mother's and, you know, my friend, actually, she's just like family to me. Sandy, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, you know, and she's just talking. And she says, by the way, you know that fur coat that I have is way too heavy for me. I want to give it to you. If you go and pay for it to get out of storage, you can have it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all, yeah, I mean, it's amazing how things just manifest just like that. I didn't have to go and beg or, or say anything. It's a phone call out of the clear blue. I haven't talked to her in a month probably and now is if you go get it out of storage it's yours oh and by the way the hat is in my freezer so when she need the matching hat it's there God ain't, tell me God ain't good right all the time just from a few hours ago last night to now So when I say to you that the, there's a flow to this thing, when I say to you God is love and God is saying yes, above and beyond what you could possibly imagine is there waiting for you. All we need to do is move out of the way and recognize that at every minute the law is at work. Now, I say, and I try to, to talk about it in this way, I don't want to just make it seem like this is about manifesting material stuff because it's not, right? There is something that is at work in this universe that is supporting you and it comes on a material level even though we are physical beings, I mean spiritual beings, is coming on a physical level and it's the outpicturing of this thing, this love that we are all participating in. And so what we do is we work on our conscious selves and whether it is the opportunities, the relationships, whether it's people who just you pop into their mind because you make them think and feel about love or something like that, those are the things that manifest. The same laws that are at work on the physical plane are there on the spiritual plane. When in Acts 17, 21, I do believe it says that it is in God that you live, move, and have your being. You are in the stuff of God, right? And this idea that somehow because we're in bodies or because we're here that we're separate from God, we are not. You are made out of the God stuff that is. You are it. You are in it, one with it. And so when you recognize that, the thing is not that you're begging some God outside of yourself for something. You are getting in alignment in your thoughts, in your beings, with that which you are. So, like, if you went over and you went to the ocean, right, and you, or we went to Lake Erie, if you dip out a spoonful of Lake Erie, right, of course, it's not the big body of water that you see out there, but it's a spoonful of that same stuff. You're the same, the same thing is true about you. You are a spoonful of God. A spoonful of God. And that means that you are by right have divine inheritance that makes it say yes to you. It's not separate. It's not a part. It's not sitting there judging you and saying, oh, you're not 
quite ready or you're not, you know, good enough. Or It's not having any of the same judgments that you have about yourself. It's saying, in my child, I am well pleased. Right? Yes. And still, all of us know that there's so much more that we could do. There's so much more that we can do, be, and have. There's so much more that we can express. I, I told a friend of mine the other day, I said, you know what? I said, we're in the midst of an election season, and we got to get people out to vote. I told him, I said, I'm going to get you a stepladder and put it right down there on the corner so you can get out there and talk. I mean, at, 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 at a certain point, we recognize that we experience God. It says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I also. We experience God through one another. I'm the place where God shows up, just like you are. You are the place where God shows up. And if you're busy hiding behind that cloud of fear, that cloud of doubt, that, that cloud of thinking I'm not good enough, I'm not the right person, you know, we have stories about that. The Bible is replete with stories that are sitting there about people doubting their own abilities, whether it was Moses and saying, no, send him because I stutter. Or, 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 or any number of people who were trying to point a finger and say, send somebody else. You are the place. You are the one. God works through you. So, so all of this stuff, you know, if, if we get into, into alignment with the consciousness that is flowing through you, it is saying yes to you and you can do all things. So there are certain divine laws, whether it's the law of compensation, the law of attraction, the mental equivalence, all of that stuff, it's all there for us to use. And once you understand the laws, once you understand what they're about and what they mean and what they're doing, then you can work on those. You can exercise that muscle. You can be about there. So it, all it takes is a shift in our consciousness. It's not about, you know, a lot of times we want to just make affirmations, you know. And affirmations are good because um, I always tell people that affirmations kind of put us in, in line with where we'd like to be, right? And, and so I, you know, I, I, I told y'all that... Uh, <laughs> You know, you see those little, uh, I, I guess there was some TV show um, uh, back in the day, and I can't remember what it was. Remember how the girls would do the little things, we must, we must, we must increase our bus kind of thing? That's an affirmation. You know, it's an affirmation about a physical thing. Um, whether it is I am love. Uh, you know, one of my things, my mantras that I used to do when I was walking every day um, uh, I love me unconditionally, and everything I do is good and very good, and I am prosperous now, you know. Or whether it's, you know, I, you know, I am loved, you know, I am whole, I am perfect, I am complete. Whatever the affirmation is, affirmations want to put us, we say them and we recite them so that we get into alignment with where we desire to be. That's wonderful. If we, you know, once we start to like really focus in on what it is that I desire. So this week I'm going to challenge you guys to really, you know, write down what it is that you would like to see in your life. Not necessarily the material stuff, but once you start to think about the, the things, the ways in which you would like to, you know, change yourself. So if I talk about this thing of love and the opposite of love being fear... What are the fears that you'd like to work on? Are there some fears about not being good enough? Are there some fears about competition? Are there some fears about, you know, where your life is going? Whatever your fear is or whatever it is that you desire to change in your life, right? If it's, you know, judgment, if it's jealousy, if it's, you know, uh, if it's the ideas of lack and limitation, you know, just really look at those things and then get really honest with yourselves about it. You know, I, I, I kind of challenge you to do this because I think sometimes it's so important for us to identify and speak to it. I will ask myself sometimes, Sandra, what are you afraid of? Because there are times when the things that I should do, I don't do. Right? 
And I know that it's something like fear that's getting in my way and keeping me from doing the things that I desire to do. What are you afraid of? If I've been saying for 15 years that I was going to write a book, why haven't I? It's not just laziness, because of course, you know, I write all the time. I got, I got stacks of, I got file folders full of stuff that I've written. What is it that keeps me from doing the things that I want to do, that I desire to do? Ask yourselves, what is it that keeps me from really doing the thing that I desire to do? And then let's work on that. Let's, let's figure out what that is. And then let's figure out how to get there. Because here's what I know, is that what you desire, desires you. When you think about the things that you want, the things that really make you happy, not not because of what other people will think about it, you know, not because I, you know, care whether somebody will see me in a fur coat, not, not any of that stuff. It's, it's the, the things that make you happy and why, right? So if, for me, if talking made me happy, right, if, if sharing ideas and helping others to see some kind of truth with, if that make me happy, I tell you, I have done that for 20 years for totally free, right? Not because I was doing it to get paid, but because it gave me joy. There are certain things that we do because we get joy and fulfillment out of it. When we only look for money, that's such a weak thing to put out there. It's all about where is it that you are being used by spirit for your highest and best good. And let's move into that place. If it makes you happy to sing, why not? You know, why not lift your voice? I, I You know, I date a closet musician, right? We got pianos and organs in the closet. But, you know... That too takes work. So whatever it is that you desire for yourself, let's get clear on it and let's figure out how to move beyond our own self-imposed limitations to get where it is that we desire to go. It is on you to that you are going to inherit the kingdom. God told you, right, that this is your divine inheritance. So why not claim it? It's not just for some people. It's not just for the good people. You know, I, I was riding down the street and I saw somebody's license plate and you know it said, you sin too. And I thought, okay, but guess what? Maybe I should have said, and you're forgiven too. Because you are, right? Even before, even before you ask, you have already been forgiven. So let's, you know, let's move beyond this idea of judgment of ourselves and other people and recognize that as we step into the present moment, all that past stuff falls away. And as we get a clue in this moment, we retroactively correct the things in our past. Let's not hang on to that. So, um... So God truly does want the very best for you. God truly is saying yes to you all the time. And so we'll, we're, what we're going to do is work on our consciousness on, on, a, on a deeper level so that we can get the things that we desire, be it, be it the financial trappings. And abundance is not all about money. Abundance is not all about the material stuff. Remember in the song, it's, it's sometimes it's just recognizing that you're standing in the midst of this God stuff, right? It's like being a fish, like being out there swimming and wondering, wishing it could find the water. You're in it already. You are in God already, and it's good, and it's enough. So, um, you know, and, and here, let me just say this before I close. God is evenly present all the time, everywhere, right? So this idea that somehow, you know, God is here in the United States and not over in some country where they're 
um, going through these battles or, you know, in the midst of war or in the midst of a famine or, you know, or like in California, in the midst of the drought. God is everywhere equally present. The land, no matter where you're standing, no matter where you are, the ground that you stand on is holy ground. God is everywhere equally present all the time. What we need to do is get in alignment with that, right? And once we get in alignment with that, because a lot of times what we see is we see all the stuff that's bad. If you turn on the news, it'll tell you all the stuff that's going wrong in the world. Even that is mind conditioning. Even that is, is trying to show you something different. It's trying to, you know, stir up your fear. Well, let's stir up our faith. And let's stir up our faith by knowing that all of this is happening for the good. And no matter what it looks like in the moment, even the rocky places, the rough places, if we just stand there, all of it will work out for our good, for our highest and best good. It does. And if it hasn't yet, it ain't, it's because it ain't over yet. Right? This is your life that we're talking about. And so... In the end, it is going to be good. It's going to come out good. Oh, my goodness. So um, everywhere equally present, in all, through all, in every situation. Let's make it so that in our consciousness, that's the first thing we see is God's goodness, right? No matter what happens. I, you know, I remember on 9-11, um, on I'm standing there and I'm watching on the TV as that second plane hits the building. And I'm talking to God. God, I know you got something good coming out of this. Show me where it's good. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hollering at God, you know, just like I'm seeing all of this stuff. Show me the blessing here because I know it's there because I trust you. Right? And a lot of times that's what we have to do. We have to stand in faith. Remember, this is like an exercise. Faith is an exercise. It's a muscle. You got to work it. You got to use it in order for you to see the results of it. Stand in faith and saying, God, I know no matter what I see that you've got good coming out of this. Show it to me. And I'm going to stand here and wait because I know it's going to be done. Ah, yes. oh, yes. it is so good. So you guys, um, all is good. Um, uh, you know, uh, when I say that, uh, you know, I'm the spot where God shows up, you are the spot where God shows up. You are the very activity of God. You are God's legs, God's hands, God's mouth. You see through eyes where God, you are host to God in this moment. So act like it, Right. When you go out there and you interact with people, when you see folks, know that you are the spot where God shows up. And all you're meeting is God. And as you have that attitude, as you come with that presence of state of mind, it'll be so good. <laughs> God is enough and all is well. All right. So you guys ready to pray with me? Yeah. So, Father, Mother, God, in this moment, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you for being here. We thank you that you are all that is. We thank you for a new way of seeing, a new vision that allows us to see past the, the stuff, the junk that we get caught up in, to see beyond that to the truth behind it that is you. God, we thank you for health and healing. We thank you for prosperity, wholeness, and abundance. We thank you for a corrected way of seeing. God, we just give thanks now. We know, God, that you are enough because you are all that is. God, let us get out of our smallness, out of our way, so that we become the blessing that you would have us to be. So, God, I know that you are in all things, through all things. So no matter where we are, no matter where whoever is listening to me, no matter where they are, God, they recognize the truth, that they are totally loved, totally forgiven, in their divine right place to get where they need to go. So I just thank you, God, for this reawakening in our consciousness. I thank you, thank you, thank you. 
So blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, and so it is. Amen.